I'm standing here this morning beside a vein trap, which was generously gifted to me earlier in the year by Barry Warrington. And in essence, insects will fly into these panels here and then down to a collecting vessel below. It allows you to record these invertebrates that you'd never otherwise find, such as Tillidae, a family of beetles otherwise known as uh, feathering beetles, which are the smallest beetles known to mankind. But over the last few days, my standout highlight was uh, my married, a fairy fly. Except they're not actually flies, but they're tiny parasitic wasps, which are the smallest flying insects known to mankind. Now obviously this was the smallest insect I've ever identified. I'm going to walk through how I did it. Now this my merit is tiny, less than half a millimetre in length. Being so small, their wings aren't structured like most other small chalcidoid parasitic wasps, but are highly fimbriate, having a fringe of long hairs on the margins. To identify them, a compound microscope is usually necessary, with a magnification of at least a hundred times. Firstly, to identify the genus of my my merit, I use two keys in conjunction. The first is a volume of Medvedev's Keys for the Insects of the European part of the USSR, which includes keys to all of the Chalcidoid families, and those of some other related superfamilies as well. The second is a paper entitled Illustrated Key to European Genera, Subgenera, and Species Groups of Mymeridae, with new records for the Czech Republic. They both use similar characters, but slightly differently, so it's useful for checking identifications. Using Medvedev, the first character you need to check is how the abdomen is attached to the thorax. It's either broadly sessile or attached by a narrow petiole, and as you can see here, the abdomen is attached fairly broadly here, rather than by a petiole. From there, I then need to examine the segmentation of the tarsi. These are the apical segments of the legs here, attached to the body by the tibia, the femur, and two small segments, the trochanta and the coxa. As you can see in the diagram on the top right, my specimen has five segments of the tarsi, here, 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 here. here and then you have uh, claws at the end. From here, I then need to look at the segmentation of the funicle. In fairy flies like this one, the antennae are split into four main parts. These are the scape at the base, the pedicel, the funicular segments, and then the clava at the end, or the club. So I can see that I can count six funicular segments here, 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 and here rather than five or seven, which takes me to genus Litus. If I were to use the other key, I'd use the same features but a different permutation, as well as details of the wing venation and wing length. This species is fully winged, as you can see, and the wing venation, consisting mainly of this basal vein here, does not extend beyond 50% of the wing's length. Now to identify the species, once I arrived at a generic identification of Litus, the second key I use references a paper by Precop published in 2014, which I was able to track down on ResearchGate. This separates the two European species of Litus, which is most easily done by looking at the arrangement of the microtrichia, or tiny hairs, on the wing membrane. So I've zoomed in, in this photo here, to the very tip of the wing. You can see that there are two sort of rows of microtrichia, one at the top, one at the bottom. Now both, uh, both the European species, Litus nipsius and Camptopterus, have these two rows, but only L. nipsius which this specimen must be, has these irregular microtrichia placed in the middle here, meaning that my specimen is Litus synipsius. Fairy flies are such fascinating and intricate organisms, but due, their, but due to their size, they are massively under-recorded. If you do manage to find one, do give their identification a go.